of more markets, Dharmesh Mehta, the MD and CEO of Access Capital, joins us now with his view on a whole host of things. Dharmesh, hi, good morning. Always a pleasure speaking with you. Uh, before I ask you about the morning, secondary Shai. markets, I wanted your thoughts on what's happening with the IPO markets because we just saw the listing of music broadcast, strong one there. DMART is expected to be a blowout. Um, how's the new financial year looking as far as money raising is concerned? Do you see a lot more take place? Yeah, we're going to see a record here next year, I believe, for the money raise, for the kind of feedback we got already and the kind of interest which is there for a lot of companies to go to the IPO market. And the past two years have been a fabulous year for all the IPO investors. So I believe there's a lot of money waiting in the sidelines to put in all these new companies which are coming in, subject to their price, you know, fairly and very reasonable valuations, as you've seen in the past two years. I think that there will be a huge amount of appetite for IPOs coming in the next future. Dharmesh, hi. Good morning. Uh the secondary market has also been on fire, uh, all-time highs. Uh, uh, do you think that uh, this is still a good time to invest? Because, you know, for the last two years, technically, we haven't done much. Uh, optically, we are at all-time highs, but from March uh, 2015 to, to now, uh, not uh, much of a move. Uh, uh, and uh, how would you approach the market from here on? But I need also not forget that this market has reached a new high in the week, when there's almost 1,40,000 crores blocked in one IPO. That kind of liquidity is not in the system to buy the markets. So it just shows you the strength of the money which is coming into the markets. Because earlier in the past when this kind of money was blocked, markets would have collapsed or there would be some kind of a financial issues in the market, which is not there at all. In fact, there's much more money which can come into the markets. So besides that, yes, the markets have not done that great in the overall, if you look at a two-year kind of a period. But let's take a step back and now understand where are we today. Because the political agenda of the government is now over with this UP kind of a huge win which has come <laughs> to them. I believe a lot of focus will now in the next two years will come on the development side and the growth path which they've been talking about. So I think going forward in the next two years, everybody will be watching what kind of you know, reforms take place. GST has already been talked about, which can be a big game changer for India. So I would be positive on hoping that government will start the reform process and the kind of investments which are needed on the ground to kick this economy in a big way. And India is right now in a sweet spot globally, as you know. So we have this opportunity. The commodity prices are coming down, which is good for interest rates in India to go down further. There's enough money in the system. Cash is lying with the banks. They're getting very poor returns. That's why you're seeing a lot of this money coming to the mutual funds and the equity market. So if you look at overall scenario where we are placed compared to the global world, I think so India is in a sweet spot. But yes, the valuations have run up. So one has to be stock selective. But I think the future looks very bullish. The future looks bullish. Dharmesh, uh, I wanted to talk about specific uh, you know, stories that have uh, made headlines over the last few days. One of them is Reliance Capital and the meeting that took place with analysts yesterday. Um, if I'm not wrong, you have been tracking this company over the last many, many years when its uh, AUMs were you know, less than half of what it is today. Uh, what kind of growth do you see now that the company has made its plans a little more uh, certain to investors? And uh, um, uh, how convinced were you after the management's commentary? Well, I generally don't comment on individual stocks, but as I was there, and yes, this has been a dear stock to us because we've been recommending this stock when actually it was just a holding company and the businesses were not even built. So if I look at overall what I saw yesterday and heard yesterday from the entire management team, it gave a lot of confidence to investors, especially on this stock. And if you look at India, if you're bullish on India, this is the best way to play India. I think so financial services will be a big, big, uh, you know, game changer in India in going forward, especially with the kind of the push and the thrust on the digital platform which is coming through. The challenges in India were always distribution for all financial services product. And it was not a cost effective way to go and distribute all over the country because you wouldn't have made any margins. With the kind of digital reform which are taking place, I think so companies like this and the other ones will benefit the most because the distribution, the distribution cost will be nothing and they'll be able to reach out to almost every Indian in the, in the country. So if you overall look at the overall product portfolio which Reliance Capital has, all the businesses are in a great, great uh, you know, growth story businesses and I think so they're at the right at the cusp of mm -hmm. a big boost coming to these sectors. So I would be really bullish on that knowing that you know, the businesses are all sexy businesses so globally, these businesses get fabulous valuation, and they don't even have the demographics which India has. There's a young India which is coming up. So they are going to be using these products more than anyone else. And for them, digital will be the way to use these products. 
and look at the mutual fund business which is doing so well for all of all the asset management companies, especially the top ones. So if I look at all those factors combined and looking at the young team, uh, the junior Ambani, uh, no, Unmol was there, that gives a lot of confidence that you've got a young, fresh team with fresh thoughts and fresh, idea, fresh ideas, and execution will be the key. If they deliver on the execution what they spoke yesterday, this can be a multi-bagger. Okay, can be a multi-bagger. Uh, but uh, Dharmesh, you know, uh, let's talk about the big market theme as well. Uh, you have a lot of uh, FII clients. Uh, uh, what's been the feedback? Because India was off the radar. Uh, I mean, uh, that's the feedback that we've normally got as well. In the last two, three days, we have seen scrambling uh, to buy the Indian stocks at all-time highs. Uh, do you get a sense that uh, we could be in for a large amount of FI buying, uh, uh, FI capitulation, as uh, you know, one expert put it? I would say, you know, see, also FI money is just not like you can't just have FI money as one clean money. You're going to have ETFs, you're going to have the hedge funds, you're going to have the long onlys. So I would say which quality of investors coming into India is more important rather than just the FI flow. I believe a lot of sub FI, the long only FIs, were actually sold out India quite early. A lot of them we are seeing coming back to the markets. Also, you need a lot of supply coming in for the FIs to invest in. Last year, if you see, even despite all this boom on the IPO markets and overall people think there was humongous supply come in, actually the money raised in this financial year is much lower than last financial year because we didn't have large QIPs. Like we recently concluded uh, Hindalco QIP and you saw the kind of demand which came in for a $500 million deal. So as the deals get larger, you'll see larger and stronger FI inflows coming into India and more important, the quality of money will be much better.